Whether you are thinking about becoming a restaurateur or you are already in the business, Michael Politz has written a must read, The Food and Beverage Magazine's Guide to Restaurant Success. Pick up your copy today at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Books A Million, or wherever fine books are sold. Food and Beverage Magazine Live, bringing food and beverage to life with your hosts, James Beard Award winner Jennifer English and Food and Beverage Magazine publisher Michael Politz. Featuring leaders in the hospitality, branded food and beverage, and CPG industries, many of whom are Jennifer and Michael's friends in the business. For an informal and informative conversation where friends in the business share the latest intel, ideas, and best practices. Live, juicy inside scoop from the tastemakers, newsmakers, bread bakers, drink shakers, spoon lickers, clam diggers, farms, foodies, and friends of the food and beverage magazine world. Here are your hosts, Jennifer English and Michael Politz. Well, hello, everybody, or should I say aloha? We're going to be having a very fun time today because we're going to take you to Hawaii to speak with one of my all-time favorite people in the food world. His name is Ming Tsai. Chef Ming Tsai is perhaps best known to most of you for not only being on The Next Iron Chef, but in fact, has had his own incredible programs, East Meets West, which have really taken us around the world uh, and given us a really beautiful glimpse in to the accessibility and deliciousness of a cuisine that has become absolutely essential and beloved to so many of us. He was originally somebody we might have seen with our friend Sarah Moulton back in the day. He's been a staple on Food Network, on PBS, and so many other things. Now, if I'm going to gush, it's because I'm a native of Newton, Massachusetts. And as part of the Boston food community, we are very proud to claim Chef Ming Tsai as one of our own. Not only is he one of the most acclaimed award-winning chefs in the world, recognized and beloved wherever he goes. Not only is he a former professional athlete, a championship squash player, an Ivy Leaguer. Not only is he a restaurateur at Blue Ginger and, and done so many other things that are noteworthy that we cheer about and cheer for with him. But I am absolutely thrilled today. If you haven't heard about his latest venture, the thing that I think he's going to literally go down in history for, he has changed the game. He's introduced a brand new food to all of us that's accessible and delicious. It's called Ming's Bings. And if you've ever been somewhere for real dim sum, the kind of dim sum you dream about on a Sunday when you don't get a chance to have them as often as you'd like, now you can have a version not only of the Ming's Bings, which we're going to talk about with Chef Ming Tsai. We're going to taste them. We're going to crunch into them. They are plant-based. They are healthy, and they were born of a really powerful, important mission. He joins us now, Chef Ming Tsai. Aloha and welcome. What's going on, Jen? Good to see you. Thank you for the nice words. Appreciate it. Listen, I got to talk about these are irresistible. These are as irresistible as much as or more than anything I ever even tried at Blue Ginger. These are truly irresistible. How did you do this by wiping oh, away good. them? I mean, if I didn't know that they were plant-based, I wouldn't know that they were plant-based, which is, I think, one of the compliments we all want to start sharing with things right. that are plant-based. But these are irresistible. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, there, there is a little story that goes along with Ming's Bings. And... Um, and I will preface it with this story ends up great. It starts it starts a little dicey, which was uh, more than four and, four and a half years ago. My wife had a crazy, surprisingly stage four lung diagnosis out of the blue. And she's 100% cancer free now and healthy. That's why it ends great. Uh, and that was a combination of two things. One, uh, the fantastic Dana Farber, one of the finest, as you know, cancer institutions in the world. Uh, saved her life. A, they have great research. They had, she had an EGF, EGFR mutation. I know a lot about lung cancer now, which I never wow. wanted to. And that cured her. They made her cancer free. But we decided to, to make a, a lifestyle change and, and uh, she became vegan. Um, why? 
lots of research medical and energetically and if you believe that you are what you eat which is something as you know jen i've preached my entire life uh, the more plant-based the better yeah. it's going to be for you and so we decided let's go let's go vegan she was it was very easy for her actually and i i eat this way often now too uh being chinese we were, we were plant-based anyway right our, most of our food is 80 percent veg and then 20 percent protein usually to flavor and so going going vegan was not that big of a jump for her uh and this is pre-covid uh and i was still traveling a ton i'm traveling again thank god and uh i literally went to those grocery stores to the frozen food section to the veggie patty section saying what can my wife eat when i'm traveling and she can still eat she eats pretty good when i'm home obviously and uh uh, there's nothing, there was nothing that was delicious. There's all these hard hockey puck and, 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 no, you know, no disrespect to Prager and Bocas and Gardenes, but they're all emulsified, yeah. dry pucks and you need lettuce and tomato. And, and a lot of them are and, indigestible. There's a lot yeah, of products that it's, it's just not, not as delicious. friendly as it sounds. Yeah, they're just not delicious. Right. And, and look, you got, you got to, it's, it's food. It has to be delicious, right? That's been my entire life. So it became my mission to to reinvent the category, the, the veggie patty category, and make something uh, much more delicious. And it was actually a very simple shift. I just flipped the paradigm and I put the emulsification on the outside of the of the patty, and created this gluten free wrapper made primarily from brown rice. Um, and then I filled it with just with delicious plant based fillings. The original one, which is still my fave is uh, eight super veg literally is watercress which has six times the vitamin c of oranges it, it bats a thousand on the ndi by the way with kale the ndi is the nutrition density index so the kale and watercress are the two perfect green vegetables uh shiitake mushrooms uh, definitely needed now is immune enhancing yeah. antioxidant garlic ginger and onions uh and then smart fat and uh, smart fat and uh calories from and protein as well from pepitas so it's nut free as well right no tree nuts no peanuts uh and gmo free edamame so that's the original one uh we then i think smartly decided let's continue and by the way i should digress it's called a bing a bing uh mings bing rise with my name catchy a bing is a traditional dim sum item you've had them before sunyo bing is scallion pancake you've had that uh, share bing are these bings that are kind of hockey puck shaped filled with pork and shrimp quite often in the streets of Taiwan and Beijing and uh, China. Um, and then there's also something called Jian Bing. Mr. Bing's in New York has it. Yeah. It's like a crepe type griddle, but goes in a circle and they kind of they they put out the batter and they fill it and flip it over. That's also a bing. So Ming's Bing is a play on a traditional dim sum. It's classic East East meets West, right? Which yeah. I've done my entire career. A Eastern technique making a bang uh, using Western ingredients, flavors. So we decided to go with Middle America. Oh, not Middle America. I don't know if that comes off right. Uh, uh, the the most the most popular flavors of food in this country. One is cheeseburger, oh. right? So we decided let's make a plant-based cheeseburger. I, I luckily partnered with Danny O'Malley. He's uh, the CEO of Uncut. Uncut is the brand of plant plant protein we use it's made from gmo free soybeans i literally did a blind test a uh, taste test of like 10 different plant-based proteins this one hands down food and wine had a great article uh, about uncut being the best tasting they have a chorizo they have a, a sausage breakfast sausage they have a beef uh, coming out with the chicken so they have fantastic plant-based flavors and so we just we decided let's do a cheeseburger let's do a sausage and peppers in honor of fenway and we're opening today at fenway with ming's bings uh, for the second year which is awesome uh we have a chorizo called a fiesta so it's black beans and, and corn just like you would get in a, in a burrito uh and then probably my wife's favorite and most actively almost as popular as the cheeseburger is the buffalo cauliflower so really classic and by the way as you know jen you put buffalo on anything i could put buffalo on my children and it would sell right and so that's a bing uh we have a great motto which is uh eat good feel good do good eat good because it has to be delicious and thank you for loving them um i'm a chef so if it's not delicious got to start over feel good because again you do feel better if you do yeah. eat more plant-based, but you also feel better with your head because meatless Mondays and this whole global warming thing, it's actually true. It's called science. 
And if the world did go a little more plant-based, it would be better for the world. So it does make you feel good about that. And then do good. Uh, we're very proud that some proceeds of all sale of Ming's Bing's benefit, both Dana-Farber, again, the hospital saved my wife's life, saved my CEO's life, uh, and another awesome foundation called Family Reach. I've been with them over 10 years. We finance all families dealing with cancer, which is still the number one cause of personal bankruptcy. Um, so this, this to me is is more than just a little side project, pet project. This is something that is 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 my career now, um, and and you may wonder what what is true success with Ming's Bings. True success with Ming's Bings would be to help help really fight the one of the biggest diseases we have in this country, which is obesity, right. and and the reason there's obesity is actually it's a poverty issue. The the so many people single moms and single dads with two kids with three jobs this is not a this is not a, a story you uh, that you never hear you hear this quite often and they have twenty dollars they're they have to go to fast food to eat that's the only place they can get sustenance so it's not it's not i'm not bashing fast food that they, they provide an awesome service and of course when on the road everyone eats it every now and then but for some people who don't know how to cook who just don't have the wherewithal or the time or the money that's a solution and um, so I'm here not to bash fast food, but what I love to be able to do is offer something that is also delicious, right. that kids would eat, that's healthy, that's the same price point as a Whopper and a Big point, uh, Big Mac. Uh, and that's where I hope uh, would be true success if Ming's Bings is, is offered nationwide that way, because that could actually really help with the trillion dollar issue of obesity, which causes, of course, every other diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, et cetera. So that's the goal. Well, listen, uh, congratulations on 100 points. Uh, I just want to uh, hold this up. This is a, a beautifully sized thing. It's about the, the size of uh, half of a great grilled cheese sandwich, but it's thicker. Yep. And it's the size of, of a great slider on the cheeseburger side. Yep. One of the things that's the, I'm going to call it the magic or the miracle about this is when you bite into it. And I made this in my toaster oven. I didn't even put it in the air fryer because we did a test. Yep. Everybody's got one of these. You can hear the crunch. How did you get this crunch without <laughs> the fry? I mean, one of the things that we agree about eating healthy, the thing about fast food, the reason we like it is it's crispy. It's got a little fat. It's got salty. Yeah. You know, we know yeah. these are things that trigger us. Talk about how you did this in the healthiest way possible. This changes everything as far as I'm concerned. Because you've really done two things. You've made it healthier. You've made it irresistible. This is truly irresistible. Awesome. Thank you, Jen. You know, the, the secret really is, and I can't divulge, obviously, recipe and whatnot. That was the hardest thing to do is develop the wrapper. Uh, I've had gluten-free bread. I've had gluten-free wrappers all over because it's been very hot for the last two decades. Um, and they're never gluten-free breads in the beginning. My my son, as you recall, used to have food allergies, life-threatening to soy, wheat, dairy, shellfish, peanuts, green, and sex. So he was seven of the eight. And the gluten-free bread back then was just like sandpaper. You, you slather with olive oil or fake butter, and it was okay, but <clears throat> horrible. So the development of the wrapper really is, um, again, and actually truly east-west. I mean, we did we used all these techniques that I knew of and have been introduced to, and and we we figured out how to take it but as uh you know you i don't know if you recall i used to be with target for 10 years so in, in the uh, 90s i had a great relationship with target i did probably 50 different SKUs with them lots of food and and so i got familiar working with factories and working on the and working in in that genre uh honestly food scientists actually like me because i think like an engineer i don't say it's too salty i, I say it's you know 6.5 well, in, in fact you've got a lot of engineering in your background as well as an ivy league <laughs> education and a degree from cornell in the hospitality program so you you cover all those bases but you That's learn the fluency of the co-packers yeah, and, and then and exactly and, and more importantly i also know what a home cook likes to do and doesn't like to do yeah. and so when we developed it i wanted it equally convenient for food service to use and the home cook. So for food service, again, we're at the Garden now at all Celtics games and Bruins games. We're starting at Barclays. Uh, we're, today we start back at Fenway. So food service, you throw them on big sheet trays, 20, 25 at a time. Uh, one of the secrets of the Ming's Bings is, is the wrapper, but we just dip them in oil. 
that's it. And that oil then freezes on. And that's why it's so easy for everyone to cook. So you never add oil. You don't need to spray the sheet tray. You put them like in a toaster oven. You got to flip them on a, or an oven or a skillet, medium heat. Flip them one time. The oil exudes out like it renders out, kind of like bacon in a way. And by that, it gets super crispy. You flip and it. It's super the other dry. Side gets crispy. It's got a dry yeah. fry. Yeah, and a exactly. dry fry is the optimal fry. It's what exactly. makes the great tempura. It, it's what makes great fried food right. sensational. If you have it, you so want, you want the crisp, and you have nothing yeah. left on your fingers, that's a home run. I want to talk a little. That's, I that's music talk, to my ears, Jen. I, I, I have to tell you, this is such a delicious product, and and I love the cauliflower buffalo. We've got the fiesta right. here. I've got the cheeseburger. Everybody that fiesta is spicy. The fiesta is really spicy. Some people are like it's too spicy. I'm like, well, don't eat the fiesta. Well, you, know <laughs> eat the them? you know who loves them? Carlotta Flores, whose family owns the El Charo restaurant in Tucson, oh, Arizona fantastic. for a hundred years. This is a yes. great product. I want to talk to you about your culinary life because you are one of the most multidimensional guys we have. Now, as a food community. We are cheering for everything that you're doing because you represent us so well as being more than just, you know, somebody that cooks and eats. You are a thinking man that you've brought all of this to this moment in time to do this, where I am declaring that you are changing the game moving forward. This is one of the best products in the frozen section. And there is now a proliferation of new products. I want you to talk about the things that you picked up along the way from your family, from the Cordon Bleu, from Cornell, and from your own experience. You talk about energy, you talk about love, you talk about food. You mix these things together in a way. I could imagine you in the salons of Paris in the 1920s holding court and holding your own against people like, you know, Picasso and Dali and Alice B. Toklas equally, right? Like you can talk about it all. Talk about this moment in time. Talk about what you've learned about food along the way. And what this really represents is sort of like a bring it all together moment. Because this isn't your first product, but you've had a long time to get ready for this. Yep, yep. Look, hell of a question. You know, I've always said this. Uh, food, food is my language, right? And uh, I, by the way, as a side note, if you're a young kid wanting to go into the food business, I would highly suggest learning French. It's a little biased because there's a lot of Spanish chefs, Japanese chefs, Chinese chefs that would be like, why French? Well, French, you learn the basics of Western style cooking. That's why I say French. And Chinese, of course, again, very biased, is the best Asian cuisine in the world. Talk to Morimoto and Nobu and, and David Chang, and they would have this. Uh, they were they, they probably wouldn't agree. Having said that, the French and Western, the Chinese and Eastern, are the two oldest and most revered. Um, and then, funny enough, at two a.m. after big chef events, where do we all end up? Chinatown. So, well, one, it's open. Two, you can get beer. Uh, but three, it's also the best food. Um, so what I mean by food is my language. I mean, I, I've always have expressed everything I, I, I do through food, right? All my childhood experiences were at a dinner table or in the kitchen. All the discussions growing up at 530 in Dayton, Ohio, so when we had dinner, the four of us, my one brother, we would discuss grades and girlfriends and where we're going and what we're doing and the chore. Everything happened at the dinner table. And while eating dinner, we would talk about the next meal. That, that's how obsessed we were. This is the same in Mexican families, Jewish families, Italian families, Chinese families, right? It's the same. Food is this, it literally is, the set, they say, the heart, the center of their home, the kitchen. It's true. It's, it's, it's where we always socially gathered as well. We would have dumpling nights. We would, we would go in the basement with the ping pong table and lay out the very inexpensive washable picnic type <laughs> spread and we'd have you know we'd have two or three families chinese families over in dayton ohio uh, <coughs> we would be we would actually be chinatown because there weren't that many chinese then and uh and we would just do dumplings for like four hours and we make all these different dumplings and then of course then that night we would eat them all and that was just common right my parents 
Uh, my parents are just my, my dad's literally a rocket scientist. He's genius. And uh, he's 93. He works full time today. He, I'm going to see him in Honolulu in a couple of days. And uh, he just applied for his fifth patent. I mean, the guy is unstoppable. He's a classic example. If he stopped working, he would perish. It's so true, right? It's what it's what is it is his life, and you know, he loves my mom, who's still still kicking at eighty eight, and they have a great life. Um, they they get to live in Hawaii, which has great food. So again, food. Uh, they chose Hawaii literally because of the great Chinese restaurants, uh, and they live <laughs> in a place and they're in their retirement home called Kahala Nui, which is awesome, really well staffed and beautiful. Um, it's like 85% Asian. So the food has to be good. You can't have bad food in a retirement home with 85% Asian. And that's a you know, great Hawaiian influence, Japanese influence, Chinese influence. Anyway, so back to food. So, you know, growing up, my parents would do catering gigs. Uh, statute of limitations, eight years. And we get paid in cash. But we would we would do parties, the six of us, with my two grandparents, would do parties up to 1,000 people. Wow. Just the six of us. Because my dad would jerry rig these $99 grills. He would go to the junkyard. He would get two wok burners. So now we could have 60,000 BTUs on two sides. Wow. And we could do Mongolian beef literally in like four minutes. We'd have another one with a big fry. I could fry freaking egg rolls. And we could cater. And we would undercut every caterer in town because we could charge like $8 a head. Everyone else is like 16 and 22, and, and we would have better food. And, and so we did. That was kind of our weekend activity. Probably a couple of times a month, we'd have a little catering gig, which was just tremendous for us. But again, it, it was our life, and we did it. We loved doing it, right? Uh, it wasn't, uh, to me, uh, which is why I think I'm so blessed, <clears throat> I, I never thought of cooking as a job. I, I never thought of really um, what I do as a career as a job. Right. It's just a way of life. It's just it's just what I've always been. I mean, I, I made my first fried rice when I was 10 years old. Right. We had guests that showed up in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, these two Caucasians that were driving through who I knew. Everyone older than us was uncle and auntie. So I invited them in because in Chinese culture, you you don't say ni hama, which is how are you? You say churlama, which is have you eaten? But like, oh, no, we're starving. Like, Good. Sit down. Sit down. I'll make you fried rice. That's all fine. And Danny, but I've never made fried rice before in my life. So I already had that confidence. Uh, and I had seen my parents make it a hundred times and grandparents. So I knew what to do. I was decent with a cleaver at 10 because I would sharpen the cleavers with my grandfather. My yeah, yeah. So I was good with a knife. Every Chinese household is leftover rice. Of course, we have garlic, ginger, scallions, and eggs. So I fired it up. Honestly, it was about a five out of 10. It's a little bit too greasy because I got that chicken out. I didn't want the eggs to stick. A little bit too much soy sauce because I'm 10. Um, <laughs> but they eat it. And... It was my first epiphany. They looked at me and they smiled and they were, they were made happy through a dish I created. And I literally thought to myself, holy shit, this is really cool. There's something I'm good at, something I love doing, and I can make people happy that this is something I'm going to stick to. And that's really the reason why I'm a chef. You know, and then you can apply business to it. And those are called restaurants. Um, and so now you do it professionally, but it's the same motive. Same goal, make people happy through food. Restaurants, of course, you have atmosphere and service and wine list. You have lots of other stuff. But primarily, if the food's no good, your know, restaurant's never going to be good, right? It has to be good food. Um, and then, as you know, my latest greatest is how else can I make people happy through food and touch more people? Yeah. Well, that's CPG, right? That's what this Ming's bangs. And um, and we're just, we're just so excited because because we're having just we're two years old now uh, February two year two year mark, and and this year we're growing growing like gangbusters which is fantastic uh, uh, as you thank you attested um, they're, they're delicious so delicious I mean they're delicious no, and that's all no that's all that matters. These everything else doesn't matter even if they're, they weren't they're that irresistible healthy. it doesn't all matter right. how healthy something is or good for you yeah. if it's not delicious it doesn't matter has the millionth bin come off the line yet. Ah. Are you going to have a party or did you have a party? Uh, we will day? have a party. No, I, 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 that's a good, I don't think so yet. Um, no, not yet, but probably this year. Okay. This year. I want you to come uh, back. And just, I want you to give me one of these when it does. Um, and there's one letter that to me jumps out as the difference between when someone else is doing what they do and they think of it as a job. 
For you, it's the letter Y that turns a job. It's really pure joy. I have watched you cook with joy and teach with joy. I've watched you and your beautiful mother cooking together on television. I have watched you succeed in a number of arenas. You do everything with joy and incredible intention. I know we don't have a ton of time left. Can you just speak briefly to how important or more important than ever intention is as we come out of the pandemic for the legions of young culinarians who were displaced when 110,000 restaurants closed, when they look to somebody like you in leadership in our industry for where we go next, what do we do next? How do we hang on? How do I not quit and go sell insurance? How do I stay with what I love? How important is a message like intention for a moment like this? You know, it's it's uh, it's actually simpler than intention. It, you, it's either, either you are or you're not a hospitality professional, yeah. right? Either in your DNA, um, you want to serve. Right. I mean, I, I'm I'm OK being called a servant. That's what I am. I'm in the service industry. Right. Um, and, and by the way, you can you can be very successful being a servant. You don't have to be king. And, uh, you know, I just I was just recently very proud. One of the one of the proudest things I do is we serve. Right. Uh, our mutual buddy, Jose Andres, who has literally risked his life recently. He was more than four and a half weeks uh, on the border of Ukraine. Um, I, I've been with him, uh, in the Bahamas. I've been to Puerto Rico. Uh, I've seen disasters. I've done relief. Uh, this is, this is a whole nother level, right? This is a war in Europe and he has served. He's today serves 300,000 meals a day and he's served over 7 million meals already. Um, so what do all of us chefs do? We do one of two things. We either go there and a lot of my friends have gone and, and I, literally want to, of course I wanted to, it just, it didn't fit and I'm not apologizing for it. I just sometimes priorities. Uh, but the other thing we can do is, which we did, and a lot of people are doing, I know Jody Adams spearheaded mm -hmm. an event recently in Boston and people are doing all over. Uh, I'm very proud that Ken Orange and I did something at Uni, um, with partner with David and Nina Fialka, who's my partner in Ming's Bangs. And we raised a million dollars uh, wow. for, for rural central kitchen. And, and I will put out there, please, if, if you have the means, which is 5, 10, 20 bucks or whatever, please go to uh, WCK's World Central Kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, the money is being used to feed millions of people that are displaced by this horrific, senseless war. And, and about uh, every single uh, one of them has lost someone violently. Yeah, Not only no, their home. It's, it's, just, it's horrific. It's just the most senseless thing. And it's still going to be, it's going to get worse before better, unfortunately. And, um, but this is what we do as chefs. This is yeah. why we're in the service industry, right? So of course my, my opening statement, which I stand by is I do want to make people happy through food, but so much even more important basic than that is to just get people food and water. Uh, it doesn't make them happy, but it gives them hope. When you run out of food and water, you have no more hope, right? It's, it's horrible. So if you can, please support. It's also, we get to say to someone, and my friend Max Tucci reminded me of this, and of course we've said it all our careers, uh, I see you and I hear you and you matter. When I feed you, I let you know yep. that I care for you. Yep. Mrs. Leah Chase was brilliant to this when she said, well, when you are in my house, wherever I'm feeding you is, is my house. I am responsible for your care for yep. your, literally your existence and your delight as well as your joy yep. and your nutrition. Um, those are all really important things. I know we've got a couple minutes left. I wanted to give you the opportunity. Tell everybody where these are available. And I want you to do a little mini commercial that we can edit out and run in these, in these shows that we do. Because I think so much of what you're doing and as a cancer survivor with a portion of the proceeds going back to the cancer fight, I think it's super important. Tell us what these are, where we can find them, and give me like a, a little mini. <laughs> Got it. So um, best place to find Ming's Bings is go to mingsbings.com. We have a Ming's Bings locator. Uh, we're all over New England right now in a bunch of grocery stores, Wegmans, um, Dave's Market, um, 
Roach Brothers. Uh, I, I'm not going to be able to. We're in about 15 Whole Foods expanding. We're going south and we're going west. Uh, you can go to mingsmings.com and get them delivered anywhere in the country, no except Alaska and Hawaii. We deliver nationwide as well. Um, we pack them in dry ice. We send out variety packs. Uh, I failed to mention earlier, we actually just launched Ming's Bing's dippers, so dipping sauces. Nothing, uh, Everything in the world is better dipped, french fries, onion rings, and Ming's Bing. So we have matching dipping sauces for each Bing's that, that you, but you can get right now online and eventually in stores. Um, and hopefully... You'll be seeing Ming's Bings um, more commonly in in food service, meaning we're at the Garden at all Celtics and Bruins games. We're at Fenway for Red Sox game. We're going to start the Barclays next season. Um, we're getting into the prep school uh, system uh, and then college system as well. So ideally, you'll be able to get them all over the place. So quick spot on Ming's Bings. Ming's Bings are a play an east-west play on the traditional bing. They're like a plant-powered pocket. We've all had hot pockets before. These are, the only difference is these are delicious and these are gluten-free, which I love, and they're plant-based, 100% vegan. Uh, motto for Ming's Bings, eat good, feel good, do good. And the do good is the most important that some proceeds benefit Dana Farber and Family Reach, awesome cancer charities. The feel good is plant-based does make you feel better and of course better for your head because plant-based is better for the world uh and then eat good because they're delicious because i'm a chef first so those are ming's bangs um basically deliciousness that are guilt-free we have our culinary professional identity rooted in the boston food community of course, maybe the person who made us the most famous was Julia Child coming out of WGBH in the 1960s. But Boston always seemed to play second fiddle to New York and you know, maybe San Francisco, maybe Chicago. But I will dispute that. I think Boston's the most delicious food center, but I'm biased. But we came up at a time with extraordinary, talented, and influential chefs that made a huge impact on the national food scene. Uh, Lydia, Jasper, and then your generation, our generation, my generation, we've got Barbara Lynch and Todd and, and so many people who've made a huge impact and today. Can you give me a, just a glimpse and a nod to the Boston food community? Because I think it's been incredibly impactful and I think they're not only have done great things, they're going to do even more great things. And I just wanted to give you a chance to uh, shine a little um, spotlight on our Boston food community. Sure. Yeah, I love yeah. I love Boston. I mean, I think I think we're right up there with all every other major city you just mentioned. Um, New York has the most variety still just because of sheer mass. Right. And, and New York still still has the best slice of pizza. Although I just read that a slice of pizza is more than a subway token now, which is... Oh, no, but come on, Galleria Umberto. Next time I'm in town, we got to go. Yeah. yeah, 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 I know, but it's not pro it's not prolific. We don't have spread hot dogs and great papayas everywhere, right? Um, yeah, look, in my generation of chefs, and one of the reasons, Ken Orange, I mentioned him earlier, he was one of the reasons wow. I came here, uh, and Todd English as well, right? Todd Michael had a figs out in Wellesley. So Todd's like, dude, you open up any restaurant in Wellesley, you'll crush it. And Ken, Ken's like, come to Boston. We need, you know, we don't have a lot of, certainly not my style of food. There was Salamander back then, uh, right? Frank, Stan Frankenthaler and then Tony Ambrose had Ambrosia. Um, but that was really it for East West. Um, but, you know, Kenny still kills it right now, right? Between Copa and Toro and Little Donkey and, and Uni, fantastic. You know, Jody Adams has, has great two great restaurants. Joanne Chang, still one of my favorites, right? Not only her cinnamon buns, but Myers and Chang is quite good. Anna um, Sortoon, the James Beard. Yeah, oh, movie. Anna. Oh, my God. I love Anna. Stunning. Stunning. Right? I, got, I used then, to do yoga next <laughs> right next to her place in yoga. Yeah, she has fantastic stuff to go. Uh, and then the next story, too. Irene Lee. Yeah. Uh, I, actually, yep. Uh, and then Ting San at Oishi. Yeah. Ting San yeah. is uh, Chinese, but trained, trained with Nobu. Fantastic sushi. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, there's, and I haven't even been to, I keep recommending cause my partner loves it. It's Patty's, I think in Cambridge. Um, I have been to the new, uh, restaurant, uh, Enzo, 
uh, in the Charles Hotel. Uh, fantastic. That's that's Mark Ladner. Uh, Mark Mark is Del Posto. You know, mm-hmm. talk about New York upbringing. He's he's a New Yorker through and through. And his his food is spot on there. Um, so yeah, we're lucky. Even out in the little Natick, we have Buttercup, which is a great little restaurant that just does really good fish and good good protein. It's you know we're lucky. We have uh, uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention my go to. Probably been to this restaurant more than any restaurant in Boston is Gourmet Dumpling House on Beach Street uh, in Chinatown. I literally, uh, uh, <laughs> I have, there's a picture on the wall where my kids are probably four and six. And uh, uh, those, you go there for soup dumpling and you go there for a dish if you like spicy and mala, which is citron. There's a dish on the specialty page called sliced fish citron style. It will blow your socks off. Eat it with a bowl of rice. Um, I've eaten that dish probably a hundred times there. We've kept you a few minutes longer than promised, for which I am apologetic and just greedily, enormously grateful. It's always wonderful to see you. I'm going to cheer for you as this rolls out across the country. Please know that of all the things you said, I am I am particularly grateful that you reminded us, as we say almost every day, that we are in fact a service industry and that we are proud and honored, privileged to be in service. And as always, I will say to you, I am at your service with great gratitude, respect, and what an honor it's been to have you on Food and Beverage Magazine Live. Ming Tsai, Ming's Ming's Bings can be found online at mingsbings.com. They can be sent impeccably on dry ice and delivered anywhere. If you want to delight someone that you love somewhere far away, send them these. It says you care about them. It says you care about their health. And it says that you want to give them something irresistible that will bring them joy. What else do you want to do when you give someone food? Thank you for all of this. Thank you, Jed. It's great chatting with you. And uh, as always, peace and good eating. Cheers. Take care. Aloha. All right. Bye-bye. Ciao. Whether you are thinking about becoming a restaurateur or you are already in the business, Michael Politz has written a must-read, The Food and Beverage Magazine's Guide to Restaurant Success. Pick up your copy today at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Books A Million, or wherever fine books are sold.